For the ambitious tycoon, the start of a thriving empire is only ever one deal away. Exploiting gaps in the market and meeting demand is all in a day's work for a cunning entrepreneur. And expanding your business is necessary if you're to keep up with the times. But you won't be the only one looking to make it big. Competitors and self-sufficient towns will soon leave you looking for that next niche in the market. And a change of entrepreneurial tactics might be necessary to fend off financial collapse. However, be careful with your newfound direction. A poorly planned infrastructure will grind your business to a halt. And badly placed polluting industry will be sure to harm your reputation and quickly turn your business allies into foes. But the savvy business person will have all this under control with well-executed trade routes by road, water, air, and rail. And a well-targeted PR campaign will soon have those green towns and villages back on side and accepting your goods. All that's left to worry about is what you're going to produce next. For you are an industrialist and success is in your blood. And who knows what the next new day will bring in Rise of Industry. All right, this is one last midnight, and we're taking a first look at Rise of Industry. So Rise of Industry is kind of up my alley. It's kind of a builder, uh, industry tycoon type management game where you're... You know, managing your empire, building up um, industry, and uh, trying to make money off of this uh, industry that you've wind up generating. Now, the game is a little tricky. I've uh, I played through the tutorial already, and I've taken a kind of the first couple stabs at it, and it's really tough when it comes down to trying to decide how you want to play the game. So when you initially start. The world's going to generate but then you have a choice you have to, a choice of a specialization and you're going to specialize between various different uh, industry tracks and as you start working in those particular tracks you start gaining experience to allow you to unlock more but the tough part is is that when you try to start producing your let, let's go ahead and pause this when you when you start producing uh, part of your uh, specialization uh, let's say um, I'm not explaining this right but let's say I, I want to work on food and uh, farming and um, some sort of food generation the, the problem is you have to connect these chains and I'll show you I mean it, it it's a little hard to explain right now but I'll, I'll show you what's going on so if I choose food farming I'm going to have some blocks that can unlock some some industries that can I can I can create a farm, I can create an orchard. And if I wanted to take that raw product, now I could take that raw product and I could sell it in town. But if I want to take that raw product and turn it into a finished good, like let's say orange juice if I was to choose the orchard, I would then need to have a food factory and then the food factory would then allow me to produce these finished goods. But the problem is, the tricky part of this is, is that let's say I did want to do orange juice. Orange juice is not just one item. Orange juice takes a carton. It also takes uh, water and it also takes oranges. Now the carton is part of the entire uh, paper mill industry and gathering, which you're gonna need a lumber yard to gather wood. The paper mill will then turn around and allow you to make paper goods and so on and so forth so this kind of it's very interesting what you choose to start off with we're gonna we're gonna go with farming because farming to me seems like the easiest path to go down mother that might not be true matter of fact i have chose farming and it seems very hard to get into the industry path because i don't have the uh gathering resources available to me like the lumber yard and the paper mill, right? So it's hard for me to get into the other aspects of it. You know what? Let's try something different here. Let's try with industry first, because I haven't I haven't really looked at industry. You can preview the tree, and you can see what's what's available in the tree if you want to 
look at the tree. Uh, you know, you got a uh, lumber yard, which uh, then turn allowed you to uh, place five more harvesters. And if you look at, uh, there's a water siphoning, which allows you to gather water. So, I, I, like I said, I'm going to go with industry first. I'm, I'm going to, we're going to try this out. <laughs> we're going to try this out. This is going to be different. So let's go ahead and pick industry. So what happens is, is that I've now unlocked the tech tree. Tech tree, I have R&D points that are available to me that I can wind up spending. And so currently right now, because I specialized in industry, I've got three points available to me. But if I look at these other points, I've, I look at these other specific uh, parts of the tree, I only have one point that's available to me. So in this case, my R&D for uh, the gathering is lumber. And then for farming, I have one point for farming. And uh, logistics, I have one point as well. So let's let's go this route. Let, let's say that I do want to do... Um, my end goal is to get to a food factory. But I'm going to need other pieces first. I'm going to need a paper mill, which will allow me to do paper goods. Now you can see over here that it unlocks cardboard and it unlocks paper. The next thing that I would want to do is I would want to unlock, where's the um, cartons? I'd want to do the advanced press so that I can do cartons and gift wrapping. Now cartons will be used in the food factory to produce um, like apples, apple smoothies, or it will be used to produce orange juice. So first things first, let's go ahead and put money into the paper mill now the paper mill is going to use lumber so we're going to do that as well let's unlock the paper mill let's also unlock the cartons in the gift wrapping because that's absolutely necessary to have up and running and we could then in turn turn around and unlock the food factory which will allow me to produce orange juice because remember i have the cartons but let's go back to gathering Let's go to the lumber yard and pick the lumber yard. I'm going to need to be able to make orange juice. I'm going to need water siphoning. And so I don't have that discipline yet. Can't put down that building yet. So the first thing to, to do would be to just work on the lumber yard, produce lumber, and then turn around and maybe unlock um, water siphoning. The same with farming. There's really nothing I can do here because I don't really have the points uh, to be able to unlock the water siphon, farms take water, so I'm not going to be able to produce anything there. Logistics, I get a point in logistics. You're going to need um, truck depots. Truck depots move things from one location to another, right? So I'm going to need a truck depot to start off with. So let's go ahead and get the truck depot. Let's go back to industry. Now, the choice for industry here is a little bit tricky. I, I don't, not too sure if I want to invest in going ahead and getting the food factory right away or I can unlock other disciplines like let's say books books I can then turn around and sell to um, a uh, bookshop or I can then turn around and unlock newspapers and posters which I haven't seen the building that accepts newspapers and posters but let's go ahead and because I'm going to spend three total points in here, I'm going to wind up unlocking these other things, which is lowers the initial cost of building factories, lowers the production speed of, or increases the production speed of factories, increases the production speed of storage capacity of factories, and decreases factory upkeep. So let's go ahead and unlock. I'm going to unlock books because I, I know that I can do something with books right away. I think right away. That, in turn, since I've allocated three points, then turns around and unlocks the other uh, specific items down here. This is the next level. Now, remember this game is early access, so some of these items are coming soon. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Now, the starting point is kind of important. Your city is only going to grow if you start producing food. And so, because I didn't choose food option, I'm really going to need to pick a city that's got a lot of stuff in here. So let's start looking at the cities and see if it has things that I need. So there's a bookstore, which is perfect. I could sell my books there. Hardware store. I don't think I could sell anything at the hardware store, though. Oh, the carton. Okay, I can sell cartons at the hardware store. So I will be able to turn around and sell some cartons off at the hardware store. This actually, this town is looking pretty good. This is uh, Asted. 
town is looking kind of nice. Farmer's market and a diner, which my finished goods, like like I was going to produce um, milk or if I was going to the diner, I think takes orange juice. Uh, yep. I can then turn around and sell um, to the diner. Now, the diner doesn't accept pizza right now, but they do accept like orange soda and apple pies and that type of stuff, which an apple smoothie as well, which I can... Mm, We'll see what happens. I Like I said, this town is not going to grow. From my understanding, the town is not going to grow because um, I, I don't have any food going in here. Once I start producing food and feeding this town, then it starts growing. I like this location, actually. I like it a lot. Let's go back and look at the other towns. This, this map is uh, procedurally generated, so every time you load it up, it's going to be different. Let's look at um, White Hall. White Knoll. And see what they have here. Oh, let's go back down to the town level. And they have a hardware store, a farmer's market, a deli. They don't have a bookstore, so not necessarily a good start for me. Okay. Other things to think about here. If I can't sell the goods, you see how you have the state thing. You could always sell to the state. and But the problem is, is that if you don't have a connection to the state, it's going to take a long time to get there. Here's an interesting connection. I don't know if that is a state location. If that is a state location, that would be fantastic. Because if I wanted to sell anything, I could sell it off to here. Let's go ahead and name our world. We'll call it Midlandia. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start here. I, I want to save this. Because... Uh, which is great. Uh, let's call it uh, before start. That way if I want to redo this for any particular reason, I can't. This purge is kind of neat for save games. If I wanted to purge all the save games, I can hit the purge and it'll, it'll wipe all the save games out. I thought that was a pretty cool concept. Uh, you can also overwrite an existing one as well. I think you could, this is if you um, click it, you could just purge the single one. I am not going to do that because I haven't tried that yet, so I don't know what the end result is going to be. Before you can build anywhere in any town, you have to buy a permit. Now, here's my starting money. I have $10 million, which seems like a lot. This has got a bunch of great resources in this area, and the permit is going to cost me, what, 400000 almost 500000 to get a permit to work and sell and everything else here, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do that. Okay, now where would be a good place? So we want to set up our industries in an area where uh, it's it's close to get to other locations, but we don't want our industries to be too close to the town because we want the town to grow, and also if we wind up polluting, we don't want to pollute the town. What is that? That's some sort of ore? Cool. So... There's a nice, decent area over here, but there's no road to it. I like this road access right here. Roads are going to transport goods from one location to another. I like the radius of this a lot because it has a great radius on the trees, which means I can put down a lot of harvesters over time. It can also come out a little bit more, and we can transport it. I don't want to destroy any of the trees. I don't even know what happens if you try to destroy if you put it in an area where there are trees if it's going to tr destroy the trees probably will destroy the trees let's put it right here it does destroy the trees okay that's the lumber yard we're going to need collectors or what they call harvesters and i get three harvesters i'm going to rotate these around because there's roads attached to these so i'm going to put a harvester right right uh right within my radius i suppose Let's put a harvester here. Put a harvester down here. So that road is pointing up, right? And let's put a harvester over here. Uh, let's have that road going out as well. Okay, perfect. I've got my three harvesters. Now I want to connect them up. Uh, we're not doing anything with this wood right, right now, but let's go ahead and connect this up. I don't have... Any road except for the dirt road. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a dirt road to here. And we're going to create a dirt road to here. 
and let's create a dirt road, connect these two roads up. Now we've connected up all of our harvesters to the lumber yard. Now the lumber yard is going to wind up producing three units. Uh, I get wood every 7.5 days. And so it's going to wind up producing three units. So what's going to happen is once it gets a piece of wood, it's going to then turn around and get a truck and it's going to drive it right to the lumber yard. Now the lumber yard needs a destination. We need to assign this wood location to somewhere. Somewhere where it's going to do something with the wood. Now that is our factory. That's our paper mill. And our paper mill is going to want the wood. Now the paper mill, I don't know if the paper mill is dirty or not. But... Let's put the paper mill over here, shall we? We'll put it right on this road. We'll give it an instant connection. And we'll have the paper mill sitting right here. Now, the paper mill... Oh, wants some water. Paper mill wants water to create... What, what are we creating? Paper. How about... Production-wise, probably going to want water for cardboard. It's not for cartons, though. It's going to want cardboard for cartons. Gift wrapping, books, deluxe books. I can buy water. So why don't we purchase water to begin with? And who's going to want our cardboard? Hmm. What is books? It's going to take paper. Let's see who's going to want this. We have a hardware store that will take the cartons. It will also take cardboard. And it'll take paper. Alright, let's start producing paper. It uh, Does cardboard need anything? Let's go back to the cardboard. I forgot what cardboard wants. It does want water. It wants two water for paper. What's the price of cardboard? The bookstore again. Cardboard, fifty-nine thousand, as opposed to oh, this is not. This is the bookstore. It's the hardware store. 35,000 as opposed to uh, 14,000. Not a lot. And not a lot for paper, too. Well, it kind of makes sense, right? All right, let's do this. Let's produce cardboard for now. It's going to take two wood to produce one cardboard. Let's look at this again. Carton would be the best thing, but I, I would need to then turn around and produce cardboard and then have to turn around and reproduce it cartons or cardboard is going to give me a decent amount let's produce cardboards let's tell oh i need to connect a road let's connect this road let's bring it right up to here well let's just have them drive over here the the um the urban road is much faster so let's take this road and connect that up and then he'll get on the urban road and the urban road will take him here faster okay so i want to have i i need to move these goods right the best way to move these goods is to have my logistics move this wood around now there should probably be two would be best so if I have a trucking depot here, and I have, there's not really any wood over here. This might be out of radius too. It's almost, we can put the trucking, the second trucking depot a little bit out of radius. Kind of over here. And let's hook this up. Okay. All right, now, lumber is gonna go to here. I want the destination of the lumber 
to come to this Trucking Depot 1. 2. Trucking Depot 2. So let's assign that. So three trucks are going to deliver wood to the Trucking Depot. I want the Trucking Depot to deliver the raw material of wood to the factory. So it's going to drive its wood to the factory. I want the factory to choose or to drop the cardboard off at the Trucking Depot 1. And I want Trucking Depot 1 to take the cardboard. Where's the cardboard? Take the cardboard into the uh, store. Commercial, and I want it to go to this hardware store. And a distance to this hardware store is 30 tiles. So there we go. All right, that's my first production line. Now, this is going to need water. So, let's have the wholesaler. Take some water over to the factory. Okay, the wholesaler is going to then de deliver water to the factory. All right, let's get it running. Let's get it up and running. So we started it off. The wholesaler is starting to take water over to the factory. It doesn't have an infinite supply of water. I'm not too sure how fast it, it generates water. We're going to let time go because this wood is now producing. So we're getting some wood out of here. And now we've got a unit of wood. The unit of wood is taking off. And they're all going and dropping it off at the lumber yard. The lumber yard is getting the units of wood. And it's turning around and delivering those over to the depot. The depot now has its units of wood. And it's going to turn around and deliver it over to the factory. Now the factory is starting to gather up water. Which is fine because it needs water. And then we're going to start building cardboard now. So this this is not doing anything right now because it's not really generating anything right now. So we're going to go ahead and speed it up. And we'll come back to this after we produce some cardboard. You can already see the cardboard is starting to be produced. And this is going to start generating pretty fast. It's going to start moving items around pretty fast. Now, the, actually, the interesting... I said I was going to come back to it. But the interesting thing is, is as you're doing whatever right as you're producing paper or producing anything if i'm producing anything with this paper mill i'm getting experience same with the logistics as i'm transporting goods i'm getting r d experience and the same with the gathering as i'm gathering i'm then turning around and getting r d experience and when we have enough we're going to get a water siphon so that we can actually get our own water we don't have to start paying for water same with Probably getting another lumber yard up and running so that I can produce cartons um, a little bit faster. I don't think that I have enough wood. Probably do another. Where else can I I'd harvest some wood? Maybe I can start harvesting some wood over here and we'll just have it driven over to this side over here. And as you can see, that my paper mill is producing. I am uh, moving my goods over and I'm getting paid for it. Let's look at the balance sheet for the month. So last month, my total income was 28,000. Now I have a net loss because I, oh man, I'm paying for vehicle upkeep. I'm paying for building costs. I'm paying for everything. These guys are producing. I've got other paper mills coming in here and these guys are producing things. Which is kind of interesting. I'm not too sure. I mean, that's my competition, right? So they're going to drive down the price of goods in this area. So there's not a book. There was a. There is a bookstore. So the price will be driven down because somebody is producing. Uh, my competition is producing a, another item, and uh, I, I'm just going to have to to work with that. I do have enough water. I, I have enough lumber that I am starting to produce on a regular basis. So I can't make this go any faster. It's just going to do what it needs to do. 
And since I have enough lumber, I'm not really too worried about... Um... Trying to put down another lumber yard. I've thought about putting down another lumber yard, but why? Why put down another lumber yard if I've got enough? I could buy the orchard right now. I I'm not doing anything with it. I can't really do anything with it until I get enough RD points to do the water siphon. I don't want to have to buy water. Buying water is costing me way too much money. It, they are staying on top of the water, though. The water siphon in the town for the wholesalers staying on top of it. So what we'll do is we'll come back in a little bit, and uh, we'll see where we've gotten. I appreciate you guys joining me. Thank you so much. Put a like if you like the series. Leave comments in the comment section below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.